Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about uh, capital structure. In a previous video, I've talked to you about uh, the central question of capital structure, which is that can capital structure decisions make a firm or a project more or less valuable? We said the answer is no. Capital structure does not matter. In fact, that is what we refer to as MM1, Modigliani Miller proposition number one, which basically says that as capital structure changes, weighted average cost of capital does not change because value of the levered firm is the same as the value of the unlevered firm. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about MM2, which emerges from this proposition. Please be mindful that we're still living in a world which is perfect. No corporate taxes, no costs of financial distress, and all these other assumptions that Modigliani Miller assumed in such a perfect world, or what they called is a world with perfect capital markets. All right, so to understand MM2, let's uh, first take a look at a firm which is entirely equity funded. All right, so imagine that there is this firm which has a bunch of assets. These assets are expected to generate some financial cash flows. These are expected in the sense that they are risky. In fact, the risk of the cash flows can be represented by something called asset beta or an unlevered beta. Because these assets are funded entirely by the equity holders, all this risk is being borne by the equity holders. If somebody asks what is the value or the market value of these assets, uh, anytime somebody asks you that, they said, well, value is a function of future cash flows discounted at the appropriate discount rate. And because in this case, this firm is unlevered, so value of the unlevered firm, you'll say expected financial cash flows, say in year one, divided by what? The cost of equity. How would you get the cost of equity? Well, anytime I say cost of equity, you can say CAPM because capital asset pricing model or CAPM says that uh, the cost of equity can be uh, calculated as the risk-free rate plus the beta of the equity holders into the expected market risk premium. And this is a unique situation where the beta that the equity holders are facing is the same as the beta of the underlying assets. Why? Because the firm is unlevered. So in this particular situation, the cost of equity is a risk-free rate plus what? Asset beta into the market risk premium. And whenever the equity beta and the asset beta are the same, which only happens, by the way, when there is no debt, the cost of equity that comes about we like to use a specific notation for that. We call it R0. R0 is a cost of equity, but because there is no leverage, we call this cost of equity the cost of unlevered equity. The main point is that here the cost of capital is cost of unlevered equity. So the rate at which you would discount all these cash flows would be at 1 plus R0. Similarly, next set of cash flows would get discounted at 1 plus R0 squared, you know, so on and so forth. Whatever the answer comes out to this equation, would be the value of the unlevered firm. Now imagine if the same firm had lesser equity and more debt. So there's a change in capital structure. Nothing has changed about the underlying assets. It's the same assets. It's just that they're now funded partly with debt and partly with equity. Is the firm unlevered now? No, the firm is not unlevered. It is now correct, levered. So whenever you're gonna try and find the value of these assets, you can't call it VU anymore. You will refer to that as VL. What is the value of these levered assets? And here's the thing. Nothing has changed about the assets, right? It's the same assets. They're funded differently, which means that the cash flows that they are going to generate are still the same. So it's the same expected financial cash flows. However, what is your cost of capital now? Well, debt is going to have some cost of debt. Let's call it RB, that's the cost of debt. And equity is going to have some cost of equity, RS. Notice that I'm not calling this R0 anymore because as debt is going to increase, the firm is no longer unlevered anymore and equity will be riskier because the beta of the equity goes up. And so RS is my general 
notation for any cost of equity for any amount of debt in the capital structure. And uh, we know that in this case, your discount rate will be a weighted average of the cost of debt, the cost of equity. So it will be WAC. Recall that WAC is B over B plus S into the cost of debt. And because we're living in the perfect world of Modigliani and Miller, there are no taxes. So there's not going to be any 1 minus T against this guy. And then plus S over B plus S into the cost of equity. The discount rate or the number in the denominator is no longer going to be this R naught guy. It's going to be the weighted average of the cost of debt and cost of equity. So this guy is going to get discounted at 1 plus the weighted average cost of capital, whatever that number is. And then 1 plus the wax squared and so on and so forth. And so now take a look. What did MM1 say? MM1 said that in a perfect world, value of the levered firm is the same as the value of the unlevered firm. These two are equal. And we know that the assets have not changed, which means that the cash flows here and the cash flows here are the same. So guess what? If in this equation, the end answer is the same, and if the numerator is the same, then what else must be true? You guessed it, that the denominators are the same as well. R naught equals weighted average cost of capital. And if you make use of the fact that WAC is just the weighted average of the cost of debt and the cost of equity, then you can say that R naught equals B over B plus S, the cost of debt plus S over B plus S, into the cost of equity and if you rearrange this so that you make rs the subject it can be shown that rs will come out to equal r naught plus b over s into r naught minus rb and this essentially is modigliani and miller's proposition number two what they're essentially saying is that even when there is no debt, so that debt to equity ratio is zero, the rate of return that equity holders are going to want is going to be equal to the unlevered cost of equity. This is the minimum rate of return that they want, even when there is no debt. And then if you increase leverage, so that debt to equity ratio goes up, the rate of return that they will want will go up. Specifically for that extra financial risk, this is the extra bit of return that they're going to require, given that they are now exposed to greater risk. And perhaps more importantly, you can see that RS is going to go up, in this case, in this way, such that the cost of capital remains the same. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!